Welcome to the Camper Tramper Podcast, episode two, where we are going to talk about why we chose a camper over all of the other options. RVs, vans, carriages, horse and buggy. Horse-drawn carriage. Horse-drawn carriage. Very eco-friendly. You might be doing that one of these days. <laughs> I don't know. How cool would that be? No, no, no. Think about it. We should recreate the Oregon Trail. Email us and let us know if you would help us do that. <laughs> yeah, if you would pay for our horse feed. Those guys eat a lot. I guess you can say a horse and buggy is definitely the OG travel trailer. <laughs> People have been doing it forever. So why did we choose a travel trailer? Well, many reasons, Brian. <laughs> many, many reasons. Number one and most importantly, the cats. <laughs> <laughs> They're very high up there on the Y list. We were totally fine with a Honda Accord. I mean, at least I was. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we did. We actually looked. We watched a few videos of cats in vans, and they seemed to be okay. But I wasn't comfortable doing that with my gatos. And Brian already had a truck, so it's yeah, like it's a lot easier just to attach just... something to it and go. And um, hopefully, hopefully it keeps going. We also <clears throat> talked to the couple that we mentioned in the last episode, Spirit of Topanga couple, um, who had transformed a bus, and they kind of told us of some of the trial and errors with that, and now I think they have a fifth wheel? They have a fifth wheel now. They have converted over, and really it's like, this is this is a lot easier. What's nice about it is that you can leave your home in one place and still have the vehicle to detach and take with yeah. you. It's kind of hard to take to these run things errands or... through Starbucks drive throughs you know? You can't do that. Oh, my gosh. We've never gone I mean, we could try. We could try, though. I think there's like 13 foot. I don't know. But, it was just a joke. So that's the benefit of not doing an RV, a schoolie, a bus... Yeah, um, even if you have an RV and you're like, well, I can just pull my car behind it. That's a lot of money. First off, it's a lot of money to even own an RV, a lot of money for fuel, and then you're pulling your vehicle, which as a mechanic, pulling a vehicle that is not getting, that's not moving under its own power means all the things that are spinning does not have circulating fluid to keep it cool. And a lot of times you can burn out your differentials. I think you also mentioned the engine of the RV is a little more difficult to repair it's a diesel usually mm -hmm. so yeah diesels are a bit harder to repair a bit more expensive to repair unlike a gas engine so if my truck broke down you know you just take it to a shop real quick or in my case i fix it myself and we still have somewhere to live we can leave it at a shop if we need to if your rv breaks you have to kind of live at a motel while your rv is getting fixed so I think those were the main things. It was cheaper for us. We found a really, really inexpensive camper. Vintage campers are making a comeback as well, which you can now find for under five grand. If you buy a new camper, good, great. They're a lot of money. You can definitely easily buy an older camper for two grand, three grand, oh, yeah. and get started nice and quick. That was the other reason why we went with the camper. Um, that we have because it is a used camper. It was in great condition. We did have to replace a few window mechanisms yeah, and that was just the nice and easy. tires. Um, but otherwise, everything else was working just dandy. And so it was a really affordable option for us. We looked, we actually went to different dealers. Yeah, we went to other dealers. For just to just to see what the price point was for new RVs and new campers or travel trailers, as they call them. Fifteen grand plus. Yeah. Every time the one we have, the um, initial value of this thing was almost twenty grand. Yeah. When it was new, we paid a lot less than that. And just <laughs> like with an R, just like with a car, the moment you take it off the lot, it depreciates. So it's not. For most people, it's not necessarily worth it to buy brand new. The luxury of that is if there's a certain layout that you want, 
if you don't want to hustle and bustle to look around to find one um, that's cheap. You know, we had to do a lot of Craigslist searching. Yeah. So if you just want something quick and easy that you can move into right away, then it might make more sense. And if it's within your budget, then sure. But if you're trying to do this um, on a cheaper budget, then going old and used <laughs> is the way to go. Yeah, and most of the time the old ones don't really have a lot of miles on them either. Like I took the tires off this thing, checked the brakes. They're like brand new still. Grant, we put new tires on it. It's only because I just wanted the peace of mind of knowing there's new rubber on there. And it really wasn't a lot of money to put four new wheels on this thing. And we just did our normal stuff too. We put flooring in it, which is inexpensive because it's small. Gutted it out, made it more spacious for us. It's really large inside. Yeah, we we tried to maximize the space sure for did. rainy days, for the cats. Um, and we have our just, own spots. Yeah, just so that we're comfortable in there when we're when we have mm-hmm. to be enclosed or when we have company over. Whatever. It pulls really easy too. It's super light. I think dry weight on it was thirty three hundred pounds, which is insane. And this thing's a twenty six foot. I believe. I don't know. It pulls really well. With all the crap in it, it's probably like close to 4,500 pounds maybe. It's not crap. <laughs> it's very informational book. If you can't fit it on your back mm-hmm. at a full sprint, you don't need it. One of the other things that we had to take into consideration was the amount of travel that we wanted to do. The other option that I was interested at least was the tiny house. I love how you can make it very unique and individual to yourself. The downfall was cost. I kind of noticed that they're anywhere from 10 to 30 or more. Um, And the other downfall is moving it around in the way that we want to travel at least. Um, Yeah, we definitely can't pull that sucker every month. Yeah. They're, I think they're a good option for someone who is going to buy land and kind of leave it put for a long period of time. For the kind of travel that we want to do month to month, it didn't quite make sense, especially since these campers are already built for that type of on-the-go travel. Yeah. Since we got it at such a good price point, we were able to do the renovations that we wanted to. I mean, it would still be nice to maybe do a couple other upgrades as we go, but for the most part, we have the inside. I want a paint job on this sucker. <laughs> yeah, for the most part, though, we, we have it pretty... Um, it's pretty cozy inside. Yeah. So far, people and our friends that have looked at it see the outside, and you're like, oh, God. And they walk inside, and they're like, whoa. This is actually really nice in here. Yeah, it's not bad. It's kind of like, it's almost the same size as... Studio apartment. Yeah, my studio apartment. (laughs) Which I paid a lot more money for. (laughs) Let me talk about the vehicles that can pull these campers, by the way. These cars nowadays, SUVs, crossovers, trucks, are becoming stronger and stronger and stronger, and the campers are becoming lighter and lighter and lighter. Obviously, if you're going to be pulling a fifth wheel, you need something that's like 2,500 or bigger. Chevy, Silverado, 2,500, GMC, 2,500 or bigger. Ford F250 or bigger. For ours, I'm just using my 2003 Dodge Ram 1500 with 5.9 four-wheel drive, and it pulls this sucker just fine. I've seen people using Dodge Durango's. Jeep Grand Cherokees, kind of like your brother's got. Pretty much any SUV can pull a three to 5,000 pound trailer. And if you're curious on where you can find that towing capacity, if you open your door, right in the door jam, there should be the birth certificate and it should say on there, max towing capacity. On my 1500, it's 8,000 pounds. So I can pretty much pull two of these things if I needed to. 
So to recap, if you are trying to... Did I say to recap? Yep. <laughs> sure did. So to recap... <laughs> okay, so to recap, do your research. When we first started out, we heard so many times over and over again that people regretted not doing their research before buying their rig. It was either too big of a rig, too small of a rig. They didn't know that there was different layouts to the rigs, which there are tons of different layouts. Um, they didn't get the features that they wanted, yada yada. So many suggested to do the research, and that's just what we did. So, speaking of rigs, there are five popular types a travel trailer, a fifth wheel, an RV, a bus, or a van. And a tiny house for those who want to live more permanently or I'm going to say yearly. Semi-permanently. Every six months. If you want to move to the south, you can tow that thing to the south for the winter. For those who want to be more on the go, RV. And a van. And a van. Oh, and a bus. And a bus. They all just move very easily. Yes. Travel trailer. And a, and a fifth wheel also move really well, but there's still a lot more packing up in between to do. Those are way better if you're camping out for a month like we are at, or a, at, at a time. a couple weeks or seasonally, something like that. See, if we did this every couple weeks, I'd get a little annoyed, I feel. Yeah. I we think... were in a sprinter and we did, had even less things. We're moving around every two weeks. No problem. Right. RV would even be cool because yeah. then the cats could be running around and they're still. If we had the money, I would do. I would do an RV, and pull pull a small car behind us. Which brings me to the five key things to consider when you're trying to decide which of those other five to buy, and that comes down to budget, who you're accommodating, lifestyle factors, the design, and whether or not you want eco-friendly features. To find out more about each of these points, check out our blog at camptrampers.com. We would also like to hear what you went with. So tag us along on your adventures because we'd love to hear from you. If you're on Instagram, use the hashtag campertrampers and we will share your story in our story. Yeah. Also, the link to the blog will be in the show notes. Check it out for more details. All right, everyone. Do good. Be kind. Go wild. Hasta luego. Bye.